Okay, do you want to know the right way to pet your dog? You're probably thinking, Michelle, don't be silly. I know how to pet a dog. You're right, it's just natural to give them rubs all over their body, right? And give them nice scritches behind the ears. Many dogs really just love that, but not all dogs. Believe it or not, there are some different ways to pet your dog. Some better than others. All right, in today's video, I'm gonna go over body handling with dogs. This includes petting, trimming nails, picking a dog up, giving them medicine, or even doing a body examination for things like ticks and fleas, or even painful burrs. I'm also gonna teach you how to give your dog a massage. This is gonna be a great hands-on video for you. Now, I have a great assistant with me here today. Everybody, meet Pickles. <laughs> Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now, before I dive right in, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss when another important lesson like this one comes out. Now, I want to start by talking about how and when to touch your dog. We may feel like our dogs are available for us to love on all the time, all day, but touch isn't always welcome. And out of respect for the sentient beings that they are, we have to listen to our dog's individual preferences. Even with dogs that love to be pet, like him, there are times that it is unwanted and or inappropriate, especially during eating and sleeping, during zoomies and rambunctious play, and when they are in their favorite spot like a bed or a crate. Now I wanna dig into that eating for just one second here. Please do not pet your dog while they're eating. I know, I know you may have heard this great advice from your neighbor's best friend's daughter who is some sort of dog expert, or <laughs> maybe you read it somewhere. You definitely didn't read it for me though. Can you imagine if you're at a restaurant enjoying your meal that you ordered and a waiter drops by, drops off some breadsticks, but then puts his hands in your food? Yeah, no thanks. What we want to do is train the dogs that good things happen when he's eating, not bad things. Be like a waiter at Olive Garden who drops off yummy breadsticks in the middle of the meal. Drop off something good as you walk by, like a high value treat. Now when you do that, your dog is going to learn that your presence during meals does not mean bad or bothersome things. Now, for more information about this concept, you can check out this video about resource guarding. Food is the most common resource, but other exciting items can be the object of resource guarding, like toys and treats, even the dog's bed. It will be part of your canine education to learn about this behavior, so be sure to watch that video. Now, when it comes to space and dogs, I like to teach kids to be inviters, not invaders. That means inviting the dog into you, not invading their personal space. You definitely want to respect certain areas like his bed or in the crate. Giving him these spaces where he will not be bothered can further the association with rest and relaxation in those areas. These are spaces your pup will naturally go to if he's feeling uncomfortable or scared or even anxious. Now I'm sure you have spots like that in your house for you. So giving them to your dog as well is a loving gesture. Did you know that many dogs do not like hugs? Hugging is actually a human concept. To a dog, a hug is actually restraining and takes their flight response away if they're feeling uncomfortable. Some dogs tolerate it okay, but would they really would prefer you to just give your attention in the way they love. Notice how dogs like to be close to other dogs and display their affection. They position themselves next to the other dog, maybe touching them or laying by their side. So let your dog do this to you as a way of signaling that he's ready for some affection. Save the hugging for another human. Next time your dog lays next to you, consider it a loving hug. <laughs> Dogs also have definite preferences of where on their body they like to be touched. We actually recently uh, had a really fun time in my private Facebook group with our students enrolled in my online course. We all colored in this amusing little graphic to show where our dogs like to be touched. Look at the variety. Some puppies were happy to be touched all over, while others definitely had no zones. Our students learned of these preferences by careful observation of canine body language. The reaction to touching could also depend on where the pup was at the time of the petting the time of day, the hunger level, energy level, and even age. You'll have a stronger relationship with your dog with more trust and respect. That goes both ways. If you heed his preferences for when and where he likes to be touched, 
you'll get more respect. If you respect these limitations as much as possible, he's more likely to tolerate touching in those no thank you spots when it's required. Now in my other Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon, I get a lot of questions about why a dog growls when being picked up. Maybe the owner needs him to move and picking him up is how they do it. Well, not so fast. If at all possible, avoid picking your dog up. Now a dog growls to indicate their dissatisfaction with what's happening. If we don't listen to the growl, he might have no choice but to escalate to a snap or a bite. Now, if you need your dog to move, maybe you can teach him a reliable recall so he'll come when called. You can also use a fun training game like the bump it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you do, resist the urge to take the easy way out and simply pick your dog up. Now over time, that will not be the easy way when your dog resists your presence and does not want to be near you or come when called. Some dogs don't mind being picked up. We can tell this by paying close attention to their body language. Or sometimes we simply have to pick our dog up. It's so important that we do it the right way though. Many people try to pick up their dog like they would a small child, under the arms. Did you know that this can actually put a lot of pressure on the sensitive areas under your dog's legs and that can cause pain to your dog? So then you could be really creating a negative association with being picked up, which then leads to growling during future attempts to pick your pup up. Now, if you have to pick up your dog and he tolerates it, scoop under his belly and hold his chest and hold him tight onto your body. This helps him feel safe and secure. Now, a lot of people pick up their dogs and they put them in the car, especially if they're too small or too young to jump in on their own. Again, I encourage you to find a better way if this is going to be a regular activity. Getting some stairs or even a small step stool or even a dog ramp will be a much better option. You can teach your dog to use these tools and when he is rewarded handsomely for it, he'll do it happily. Now the car can be a source of stress for some animals and that stress could start with the process of getting in. Instead, make sure that the process is positive from the start all the way to the finish. For more information about car travel, check out this video here. But what about petting? What do I mean when I say there's a right and a wrong way to pet your dog? Well, again, this really is up to your dog, but you've probably been taught to do this. You say, hi, pup. You lean over the top of them, all intimidating-like, and you pet them on the top of their head. But if you think about it, this is actually very intimidating. It's a really intimidating position because you're towering over the top of them. And even the most confident dog may react negatively to this. There is a better way to pet your dog, especially if it's a new one that you're meeting for the first time. Now, I actually teach my students to turn away or sideways, look the other way away from the dog and or down towards the floor. And then you're going to keep your dog in your peripheral vision. You're gonna lower your hand so that he can smell it, but don't hold it out to his face. Let him do the sniffing or let him come to you. Now, once he appears to have a satisfied curiosity, you may be able to reach under his chin for that petting. Did you catch that? Not over the top of his head. That's actually a very scary thing for most dogs. So petting under the chin or even under the chest is a much better option. You should go puppers. Oh, sugar puppers, huh? Yes, under your chin, you like that. Teaching this method to your kids to use with new and unfamiliar dogs is really important. So if you learn anything from this video, I hope it's that. It's really best if you can ask your pup if he or she wants to be pet. You can get permission to pet your dog by watching their body language. This looks pretty much like you would expect. So you're going to try petting your dog two to three times, then you're gonna stop and you're gonna wait for a reaction. Yes, okay. So see, he stays engaged, he wants some more. If they ask for more pets by coming closer to you, then that means that you can continue. This is a great lesson to teach kids too. Respecting a dog's space and personal preferences is one of the most important things for children to learn. Now for more information on kids and dogs, especially how to handle the tricky biting phase, this is gonna be a great video for you both to watch. Now, of course, touch is something that's necessary even without the dog's consent sometimes. This would be for things like vet care, grooming, wiping off muddy feet, or putting on equipment like collars and harnesses and leashes. The best thing to do is to desensitize the handling of body parts and new tools. Now the desensitization process is called counter conditioning. So the basics of that process are that you touch or reach with the item 
Then a treat is delivered next. Then the touch or reach stops and the food stops. So it looks something like this. This is a process we use to overcome fear. There's a little more to it than I just described, so you're definitely going to want to check out the 30 Day to Puppy Perfection program for the full lesson. Now, let's talk about an area that is so tricky for many puppy owners, the nail trim. <laughs> the number one reason why dog owners fail at this task is that they go a little too quickly and they actually quick the nail. This means that they cut the blood supply in the nail, causing pain and discomfort, as well as a negative association with the feet or even nails being touched. Now, if you start slowly and pay very close attention to your dog's body language, you'll see when it's time to advance to that next level. So for some dogs, simply hearing or seeing the clipping tool might be the first step for a week or more. The good news is that once you establish nail clipping as a positive thing, it will be easy peasy for a lifetime, as long as you continue to make it positive. Now I'm talking about using high value treats. For more information on this whole nail trimming and grooming process, go ahead and check out this video here. Trust me, if you go slowly, you will get there. Here's a pro tip. Don't plan to cut all the nails in one sitting. You might do one a day every, say, 10 days or so. There's nothing wrong with that. And always try to pick a time when your dog is relaxed or has drained out all that pent up energy. Speaking of relaxed, massages are such a relaxing activity. Your dog might love them too. Now I call these calming rubs. These are great when your dog needs to cool down or rest and relax. Maybe he's had some fear of a noise or he needs some help settling, or he's had a rigorous play session and now it's almost time for the crate. Doing some calming rubs with your dog is a great way to help him get ready for a nap. Now, just like toddlers need calming bedtime routines before they are ready to doze off, some dogs, like pickles, need that too. Calming rubs are slow, long and firm pets running the entire length of the dog's body. I do have a great lesson on this also in my online course under the bonus section. You can take a look at it there. Another type of body handling is for health reasons. So if you live in an area with ticks, which most areas have, you're gonna be wise to do a quick review of your dog's fur after coming in from outside. You can easily teach your dog to stop and wait for the process to be complete before continuing on with other indoor activities. This works for mud and dirt too. I've actually taught my guys to stop and offer up their paw when coming in from a muddy yard. So I make it rewarding for the dog to do what I ask. So it's really a win-win situation for everyone. Again, the traits are key as we develop a new habit. What about giving meds, especially things like ear and eye drops that can also be problem areas for many dog owners? Well, just like with nail trims, you're gonna to wanna to start slowly and outside the time that you actually need to apply them. It's much better to start slowly than to try to do it against your dog's will. If you force it, even once, he will probably have such a negative association with it that it's gonna be a harder time and a much longer time to desensitize them of the process. We do the desensitization process the same way we do with the nail work. So the medicine is presented and the treats are delivered. And once the medicine goes away, the treats stop. This is literally rewiring the brain to associate the medicine with something positive. Then we slowly come closer with the medicine until eventually we can deliver it. Now, if done right, your dog will happily anticipate the meds. Rewarding is going to be key here, as well as going slowly. So save those extra tasty treats for tough jobs like this. Another pro tip, if it's slimy, stinky, or smelly, it's probably high value. Now, that was a whole lot of information all about touching, petting, and handling your dog. I do hope you learned a few great tips that will further your great relationship with your dog. In the comments below, tell me your dog's favorite spot to receive extra pets or scritches from their human.